Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Elios and I'm the fifth master of the Center for Political Research and Documentation at the University of Crete. And uh, I will talk about the experiential learning uh, of uh, institutions, of political democratic institutions. So what we use in the political science department in order to engage students uh, more and to learn about the democratic institutions. So here we will see an example, which is actually the uh, European Parliament simulation. Uh, you can simulate, if you like, different political institutions. For example, you can simulate the, the regional council, or you can simulate the national Parliament, we have selected the European Parliament, which is complicated and it's a little bit difficult, so that's why we selected it. Uh, so, um, first of all, I, I would say a few things about the simulation and the experiential learning and uh, what exactly we aim uh, using this method uh, of experiential learning. Uh, a few words about the European Parliament, of course, you know about the European Parliament, but sometimes also the students uh, not know how exactly it works and the procedure of the legislative procedure is a little bit difficult to understand so that's why we use this process and then we will play a little game uh, first of all uh, our aim using the simulation is to engage students and to make them learn and enjoy this learning process um, about a democratic institution for example about the European Parliament so we provide them, first of all, with uh, a guide. We created a, a study guide where before the simulation they have the study guide and they will have the rules of the game, let's say. So we assign them with a specific role, for example, members of the European Parliament, journalists, um, in the presidency of the European Parliament. Um, and then they have to play this role. And of course, you can understand, you cannot play this role in one hour or in three hours. So, we have implemented this in different occasions, for example, in three hours or in one day or in two days. They, they can do, you can do this as long as you can because the procedure, the legislative procedure is uh, so uh, complicated. Also, you can select a specific part of the procedure and you can simulate this part only in order to the students to understand how this uh, works. So, uh, first of all, um, the participants learn how democracy works, actually. Uh, either in the regional uh, council, for example, we have uh, made a simulation in Iraklio um, in the regional council of Crete, or the national parliament, or the European, some other European institutions, not only the parliament, for example, the Council of the European Union, the Council of the Ministers, if you have less participants. Most of the times we have simulated the European Parliament, but it's a little bit, um, let's say, cut. So, we did that. And, of course, to enhance the human rights, we select a topic, a topic that is actually something important for everyone, and then they can discuss about this. And what is important here is that they have a role. And sometimes this role is contrary to their beliefs because they are representatives, they are members of a different, sometimes, political party than, and opinion than their opinion. So they have to play this role and in this way they understand how democracy works and what are the different opinions. Uh, of course, the aim is not to, uh, I mean, change their beliefs, but it's just to okay. see how dialogue goes. So this is uh, actually important and we have seen that the students like it because of course if you teach, for example, European institutions, yes, you have a theory, you have the way this works, you have a lot of uh, theory that sometimes maybe it's boring. So and they, they study all of these issues and okay, sometimes they are bored. If they play the game, we have seen that they understand how this works. So then we uh, have conducted uh, a research and some questionnaires, and they answer that now that I have played the game, the simulation game, I understand how the European Parliament or the National uh, Council or the National Parliament 
works. Of course, it's not easy to prepare this. Uh, so the first thing is that we have selected this European pattern simulation, and of course, um, we have to understand uh, what is the role of the European Parliament in the European uh, structure. So uh, the European Parliament's role is legislative, and you have the different, the other different institutions. If you want to, uh, I mean, extend this uh, simulation, we can also add, for example, the Council of the European Union, because European Parliament and Council of the European Union are the two legislative institutions. You can add the European Commission, which is the main actually actor which starts the legislative procedure. So, and propose the legislation to the European Parliament and to the Council of the European Union. So, it depends on the time that you have and how you will separate these, these hours uh, and the, the groups that you have. Um, so, about the European Union, the European Parliament, uh, what it does legislation uh, decides about the budget of the European Union, uh, parliamentary control and international agreements, and this is what the students should learn an outline, actually. It's more, far more complicated than that. Uh, first, the um, uh, European Commission starts the legislative procedure. Uh, it gives the proposal for legislation to the European Parliament and to the Council of the European Union. There's the first reading from the European Parliament and from the Council. If they don't accept it, it's over. If they accept it, then we have a law. If they want to do amendments, then the Parliament begins with amendments. It proposes these amendments to the Council. Then the Council, if it accepts, it will have a law. If not, then this is over somewhere there. If they create more amendments, it goes to the second reading. And then we have again this. And if they continue with amendments, we have the conciliation committee, where we have, of course, um, the a process of agreement about a law or not. Then we have uh, the draft law, where they cannot do any other amendments in the third reading if they accept it, and you have a law or not. So this is a little bit complicated. We cannot simulate the whole process, of course. We take a part, for example, the first part, for example, of the European Parliament reading, and we continue with this. Uh, if you have more time, you can continue with uh, all the uh, process. Uh, this is the distribution of um, uh, the uh, MEPs uh, with the countries, and this is the distribution. Uh, well, you have a lot of changes here uh, over time, but this is the distribution with political parties. Then, if you have the students. Of course, you don't have 700 students if you create a project and you have 700 students. Okay, but if you don't have, because all of them are 705, then you can split them accordingly to the power of the different parties, the different, different political groups. So, um, yes, uh, the first thing is that the organizer, we, uh, as teachers, we try to give them their role and explain them what they do and of course then um, to engage on their roles. For example, in this way the, the groups start to discuss about the legislation. You can do this for example uh, in the beginning, give them time for example a week, they can discuss this and then they can also uh, have meetings with the different groups, the different political parties in order you know, to reach an agreement, a pre-agreement, and then come to discuss what are the positions they agree or not. So you create an of, a context of uh, discussion then. And then you do the changes in the legislation proposed uh, and you vote for, it, for this. So this is the simulation process. What I have seen is that if you do that, the students enjoy this, and the students are engaged with this. They see that as a game, and they they actually learn. This is the experiential learning that we have, we use when we are teaching about institutions. Of course, we try to use it. Some do not use it uh, uh, um, yet, but it's something different that makes students engaged. So now. 
because I talked about this, I would like to begin with a game, with this simulation game. Of course, we are not so many, but we will do this uh, actually uh, a little bit uh, differently. I will uh, split you in groups, so you will have a role in different political groups. I will say about that to you. So I see that, uh, okay, I will distribute you and with uh, your roles, and then I will give you uh, an outline of the positions of the party that you uh, an MVP and the legislation that I propose because I'm a commissioner now. And I will propose a legislation about um, health. So about the, the common policy in health. So I will propose this. And then you will have some time, you have at about 15 minutes, let's say, uh, to discuss about any amendments, and if you agree or not, because you not have, maybe you will not agree with that. Because I have here a budget which is like 5 billion euros, wow. even, I don't know. I will see. We will see. You will decide. So, um, now, uh, let's see. Um, okay, I would like you here, three, five, seven, okay. You are the European People's Party. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now for the European People's Party. You know, uh, most of the time, let's say, because I heard this yes, most of the time, most of the times we do that in the beginning, we have a questionnaire to the students about their political beliefs and we give them a different party, a different role. So okay, let's say that you are the European People's Party. So I give you here an outline of the position. Maybe you know the positions of the party, but okay. And you let's say okay. you please are the socialists and democrats. Yes. <laughs> so you are the socialists and democrats. So now um, you just see, just read the proposal and see if you agree or not, and if you want to make any amendments in this proposal. Remember your role. Remember what exactly is the party that you represent. Just remember that in the end you have to select one representative that will uh, present the changes and their position, your position. If you finish, one representative of you can go and discuss with the other party if you can have common ground somewhere. If you like, with the party that maybe you see that you have some views that there are similar, let's say. We don't have enough time to discuss, but okay, I think that it is it, it is okay now to have some uh, discussion about the propositions here. So that uh, in the normal procedure, we have the parliamentary committees where some representatives of the parties 
uh, are there and they discuss the amendments. But before that, the parties have a discussion all together, their members, to, under to, to understand what exactly is the uh, proposed legislation and what they could propose on that, what are their positions on that. So now we skip the, uh, the part of the audience because it's not possible to do it uh, here. So here we will now um, present what are your views and your amendments on the different articles of this proposed let's say, legislation. So we will begin uh, with the European People's Party, which is the uh, largest one. And <laughs> which is the largest one, and it's actually the Center Right Party. Uh, just uh, remember that you have uh, a road which is connected with your ideological roots. So here you are, uh, Center Right. So, please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, now I have taken all. Now I'm not. I'm not the commissioner. Now I'm the president of the European Parliament. So please, now. <laughs> order. Order. So yes. Um, first, our first point of contention is related to point one C, in relation to the transparency of the claims procedures. And we think that there should be a very clear template of good practice that should be outlined to each member state of what is required in this instance. How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. One more coming there. Um, do you go through all these and then, or is there a comment? You, you, can, you can say if you want about your proposals. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're concerned as well around the the healthcare definition in terms of elective procedures that people choose are maybe essential treatments in acute situations that our members may need. So we may need further clarification on, on that point. Um, the new point five, the new European Health Fund. We are concerned in maybe protecting the finances of the member states and that the five billion euros, the accountability there and the detail and justific justifications provided by each member state will need to be very clear, detailed, and the, the appropriate use of that money will need to be very transparent over a period of time. Thank you. So, is that, do you have anything else to propose? No. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> you know, uh, the, Euro you would like to <laughs> the European Business Party has the majority in the European Commission. So you don't have a lot of things proposed or nice, because I was also the commissioner that I proposed the <laughs> Okay. So uh, thank you. So let's go to the Socialists and Democrats. Thank you everyone. Uh, it's uh, nice to be here at the Parliament and thank you for a good discussion. First of all, the people in the Socialist and Democrat uh, uh, Alliance here find this to be another attempt to, to separate the European citizens from the citizens of the world, which we do find to be reprehensible. Uh, <laughs> so we would like to argue that there is a lot of additions that needs to be First of all, point of exclusion was of course cover people also from other countries than discrimination. It is once again an attempt to separate or separate the European citizen from the rest of the world, but we are all members of the world. So yes indeed this will be everyone, even those of the and they could of course be exploited by the richer countries in Europe which will do 
think this is a high risk. But also member states must reimburse people and we also need a standardized list of disabilities. Otherwise we see that there is a risk that the richer countries might just deny people with certain disabilities health care, which is of course a very high risk. And under point five, we once again see the sheepskate alternatives here of just spending five billion euros a year, which is a preposterous small sum. So we argue that we need to have at least 10 billion a year, plus of course we need to get new financing yearly. So we also propose this to be added on a taxation level. So, um, so we can support this in the long run, and also of course because this is indeed a lot of money, it should also be available other citizenships uh, than just the European citizenships on a need basis. So once again, we are to open up Europe, we are to open up our resources, but we are also to keep in mind that we are different countries. So let's work together. Thank you from the socialist and Parties, we, uh, we believe in self-determination of states, but uh, also in the European idea, we'd like to support the motions by our colleagues in the Central Democrats over here. Um, we did want some amendments to point 1A. We found there was a problem in the first sentence that uh, this information was only available on request. Um, and we think that this information should be made openly accessible to all citizens, and that the standards should be clearly defined. We found that that was problematic. Um, and that the standards that, that were being provided, the guidelines, also in point 1A, uh, that member states should be allowed to tweak these. So while we accept the European uh, Union's commission, our position on this, we would like to have some autonomy and determination from the state. Uh, what, was our, what was our next? Um, the other one is about freedom of movement in 1B. Mm -hmm. In the last sentence it says, this directive does not oblige healthcare providers to provide more extensive information to patients from other member states and we thought that this is limiting in some situations so and it's against our ideals for uh, the freedom of movement and um, equity and fairness so we that should be uh, reworded or changed mm -hmm. i suppose we also had some concerns about point three, where member states shall ensure that the healthcare providers on their territory apply the same scale of fees for healthcare for patients from other member states. We didn't think this was uh, accommodating of states with low GDP, and that this should be uh, proportioned. It does say scale of fees, okay. but uh, yeah. Okay, and we have one more. So we'll do the last one then. And the last one was uh, number five, where he talks about covering immediate health needs. The amount, definitely we agree with you, that the amount is preposterous, preposterously low. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, that, but we need to, when we talk about immediate health needs of the member states, uh, what is the mechanism to map these needs? And this should be defined and uh, whether there is some kind of ranking of needs in terms of what needs to be dealt with first. Thank you. Now, uh, let's go to the Greens. You didn't realize they were here. Uh, as one of uh, our main political values is to uphold the rule of law and fundamental rights, increase transparency and fight corruption. So when we discussed uh, point uh, one from uh, this uh, proposal, then we agree with it because uh, I, we think it's dealing with uh, this uh, value of ours. And uh, another our value is the non-discrimination of uh, the groups. Uh, uh, and uh, so we accept again number two, point number two, which is dealing with the principle of non-discrimination. And um, we agree with number three, uh, which uh, ensures healthcare providers on their territory to apply the same scale of fees 
for the healthcare for patients from other member states. So we, uh, we think it is um, uh, just to, to find the, to, to do it uh, like this. But we are not quite sure about um, the cross-border healthcare. The last uh, part of it, uh, where we discuss uh, the reimbursement of other related costs, whether they should be covered. Maybe it should be specified uh, what uh, in what occasions uh, it should be done. Not uh, um, always. We think about this and on number five, about the five billion euros, uh, we agree that it should not be less, but uh, we, we can discuss uh, more uh, depending uh, on um, the reasonable necessities that we don't know nowadays. So this is uh, our opinion as Greens. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now let's go to the political group Identity and Democracy. We don't agree almost anything. <laughs> <laughs> we think we have been paying so much, too much, and we don't get anything back. <laughs> nationality comes first. Absolutely nationality. We don't accept shopping in our beautiful country. <laughs> Healthcare shopping. No. So, sorry. <laughs> so now let's uh, hear the European Conservatives and Reformists. <laughs> Please. Um, so we believe in minimal regulation. So I think that point A and B needs to be just cut completely, cut down. I think you're asking people to do too much. Um, and yeah. And then we also believe that um, while we believe in freedom of the in individual, we also think that immigration should be controlled <laughs> and um, we need to put an end to um, the abuse of asylum procedures. So we think that point two and the principle of non-discrimination with regard to nationality um, should be kept, but it should definitely be tightened up because we don't want to uh, have people abusing it. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> And last but not least, uh, the left. The left, yeah. The <laughs> they left. Thank you. Um, generally, we also do agree a little bit that most of this is rubbish, but uh, for very different reasons. Um, obviously, we do not think that uh, individuals should be charged with anything, and healthcare should generally be something that comes from the state and is provided as it is a fundamental right. Um, so talking about prices and how much the individual has to pay and how much the individual has to put work into getting money back um, for procedures um, is something that does not need to be discussed in our eyes and should just be provided. Um, so therefore we also don't agree with um, this proposal. Um, in the least, though, we would wish for the changes that were proposed by, I forgot the names of the parties, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, were uh, proposed by the, uh, by the socialists and also by the, um, what, what was that group, uh, with Jeremiah? Was uh, the the Euro. 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 Yes, thank you. And also 10 million at least, of course, um, for the fund. Yeah. So thank you very much. <laughs> Just I want to clarify here that we have also in the European Parliament the non-inscripts, but because this is a diverse group, they are not a group actually, they are not affiliated in any party, so because they are with different opinions, we uh, normally don't uh, give them such a role, or, or if we have a lot of students participating, we give them a specific role, coming from uh, far left or coming from far right, let's say, something like that. But that's why normally we don't uh, give them a role because it's not clear what they, uh, their beliefs are. So uh, uh, that's just to clarify with, uh, with this uh, issue. Uh, now, normally the procedure goes, uh, I collect the proposals and then we vote 
for each and every amendment that you propose. But now this is not possible because you have made a lot of amendments, but the proposal goes like that. Uh, I collect, or we, the organizers, let's say, collect the amendments, then there is like a break, then you uh, just put the amendments over there, and then you vote for each and every paragraph, for each and every article and paragraph. You see here, it's B, C, and you vote. The amendment of the Socialists and Democrats, the amendment of, uh, for example, the APP, or the amendment, uh, or you vote against everything. I mean, I see that the identity and democracy will be against everything there, so okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you may vote anything. But, sir, uh, I don't know about politics, but the right wing side, they always complain, but they don't have any suggestions. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is on discussion, I mean, in discussion. They, they complain for everything, I mean, they normally complain. Not, they are not the only ones who complain. They are also from the left uh, complaining, but they propose, they have proposals. Well, they are totally different, of course. Uh, here, uh, the, the, the main aim is just to see what's, what is happening. Yes, they complain. So just play their role there, just to show and to for the other students to learn what are they, what are the others, what are their opinions, or because they are their opinions anti-immigration, anti-European, because they identity and democracy are anti-European. Um, anti, anti, anti. So you know them. I mean you learn about them. Okay. This is the main aim. Not only about them, about the socialists, about the left, about the Greens, about the uh, other conservatives, about the Center right parties because okay, they are. I mean, the, the largest party uh, in the European Parliament is the uh, center right, and then the Socialists and Democrats. So, this is the main aim here. So, uh, that, that's why we do this simulation not only just to learn about the procedure. I mean, now, yes, we will go and vote for each and every amendment, and then uh, if this is passed. We give it to the Council of the European Union, where the ministers will decide if they accept it, and then we have a law, or uh, they do more amendments, and then it goes back to the European Parliament to discuss it again. Okay, uh, this is the procedure, but also they learn about the position of the different parties, of the different people in Europe, because we live in Europe and we have we have. Uh, opinions, and we have all of these people over our societies. So then we learn about them, and we learn about what they have to say, and we play their role. And uh, if the uh, if we have a lot of participants, we assign them with the roles of the presidency, of the commissioner, of the journalist, because then we have breaks, and then they go and they give uh, like. They, they speak to the journalists and they say, uh, they, they say what, what are their positions? Because maybe we do this uh, for two or three days if we organize it, we have time to organize it like that. And this is a way to see the different uh, roles, also of the journalists. Then this is also important. And also I told you that uh, you can go and discuss with another uh, party. This is also another, uh, another part of the simulation. If we have a lot of time, then you go to different rooms. And then the one representative of the president of the uh, part, the head of the uh, group, goes to another uh, group which is closer ideologically, let's say, and discuss, do you have anything in common here? Because we don't have the majority, let's say, but if we go together, we will have a majority. So, do we want to pass this? And then they try to find coalitions. So this is also something, a part, which is really, really um, like important because they learn how to do these coalitions, how to discuss and find common ground. So there are a lot of things that they experientially the students can learn. And we have used it also in pupils of the high school. And really, they, the feedback we had in the end was very, very nice because they, most of them, they didn't know about it, how this works and what are the different opinions. 
in the end, uh, the thing was that they, now I know what's happening. Not all the details, but I know. I have a, a view. And that, that's, that's very nice. So I would like to thank all the members of the European Parliament here. Thank you very much.